In this lesson, you're going to learn how to add Google's autocomplete feature to the input fields so that users can quickly select their addresses from the drop-down list as they type them. Also, I'll be showing you how to receive origin and destination place objects when the addresses are selected from the autocomplete drop-down list. Finally, you're going to see how to refactor the code to avoid the repeated code. Let's get started. The first step is to add the places JavaScript library to the index.html file. As you can see, the autocomplete feature is a part of places API. So go to the index.html file before the closing body tag, create script tags and add a source attribute, then the Google Maps base URL, which is https colon slash slash maps dot google apis dot com slash maps slash api slash js question mark i'm going to pass two query parameters in here the first one is the library that we are going to use which is places so libraries equals places and sign your api key i'm going to say key equals add my actual api key also make sure to enable both maps javascript api and places api libraries in the google's cloud console if you haven't already next go to the origin destination view component and define two autocomplete objects for each input field inside the mounted function mounted function is a great place to put any dom manipulation code in view First, define the export default object inside the script tags. In there, create mounted function, like so. Then, declare an autocomplete object for the input field and assign it to the variable called origin autocomplete. So, const space origin autocomplete equals new space google dot maps dot places dot autocomplete uppercase a open and closing parenthesis then semicolon this takes two arguments the first one is the input dom element that we want to attach the autocomplete into so go to the origin input field in the template and add a ref attribute to it with a value of origin in quotes since I am here, let's add a ref attribute to the destination input field as well with a value of destination in quotes. Come back to the origin autocomplete object. In between the parentheses, add the origin input DOM element using this dot dollar sign refs opening closing square brackets inside the quotes origin. And the second argument would be a JavaScript object, which is optional. I'm going to add a property called bounds to it. Using bounds property, we can add coordinates of a specific city or town or country. This way, when a user start typing, the autocomplete will show the addresses from that specific region first before showing other regions. So the value of bounds property would be the lat long object passing coordinate values. In my case, I'm going to pass Ottawa city in Canada. Then new space google dot maps dot lat long bounds opening closing parenthesis. In there, I'm going to create a lat long object new space google dot maps dot lat long opening closing parenthesis this is where i'm going to pass ottawa coordinate values separated by a comma like so switch back to the browser i'm going to start typing an address as you can see i only see addresses from ottawa region first 
before getting similar matching results from anywhere. Nice. Let's capture the selected address by attaching place changed event to the autocomplete object. So origin autocomplete dot add listener, then opening closing parenthesis, semicolon. This takes two arguments. The first one is place underscore changed in quotes, which is the event name. And the second one is the callback error function, comma, opening closing parenthesis, equal angle bracket, opening closing curly braces. Then I can get the selected place object by running get place method on the origin autocomplete object. I'm going to wrap that with console logs. Switch back to the browser and I'm going to select an address from the drop down list and you can see the place object in the developer console. As you can see, it has pretty much all the information you need, such as address, geographical coordinates, and so on. Nice. Let's do the same to the destination autocomplete. Define a variable called destination autocomplete and assign autocomplete object to it. Equals new space google.maps dot places dot autocomplete opening closing parenthesis and semicolon then pass the destination input dom element to it as a first argument as well as the bounds so inside the parenthesis this dot dollar sign refs opening and closing square brackets inside the quotes destination comma i'm going to copy the second argument from the origin autocomplete constructor and paste it in here like so. Then attach place underscore changed event to the destination autocomplete object as well. Call by error function as a second argument, which is very similar to the previous one. Inside there, invoke get place method on the destination autocomplete object and console log this as well, so that we can make sure both are working as expected. Let's check it out. Switch back to the browser. I'm going to select an address from the origin input field and I'm going to select an address from destination input field. And you can see both address place objects in the developer console. As you can see, I have lots of repeated code in here. Like I have autocomplete object code twice as well as the place change event. Let's fix that. As you know, in the template, I have two input elements that use the ref attribute and they are automatically added to the this dot dollar sign refs, which is a JavaScript object. Now I can get the input DOM elements dynamically when we loop through this dot dollar sign refs JavaScript object. In that way, I can create multiple autocomplete objects using a single constructor but passing different arguments. Let's see that in action. First, comment all the code inside the mounted function. Then use for in loop to iterate over this dot dollar sign refs JavaScript object. So for opening closing parenthesis, opening closing curly braces. Inside the parenthesis, I'm going to say let space ref in this dot dollar sign refs. Inside the curly braces, I'm going to console law variable ref. Switch back to the browser. If you look at the developer console, you can see the property names of this dot dollars and refs object. In this case, origin and destination. The value of these properties would be the actual input DOM elements. I can get the DOM elements using this dot dollar sign refs, opening and closing square brackets, and passing ref. Let's switch back to the browser again. And now you can see the actual DOM elements in the developer console. Nice. Now I'm going to define a variable called autocomplete. So const space autocomplete equals instantiate autocomplete object. So new space google dot maps 
dot places dot autocomplete and opening and closing parentheses. Then I'm going to pass the first argument, which is this dot dollar sign, refs, opening and closing square brackets and ref. Then add the second argument, which is a JavaScript object with the bounds property. So I'm going to copy from my previous code and paste it in here. As you can see, even though I have created two instances of autocomplete objects for origin and destination input fields, I have to write it only once inside the loop, which is better than before. Now we can easily attach place changed event to the autocomplete object. Finally, console.log autocomplete.getPlace and opening and closing parentheses. Switch back to the browser and you can see I can get the origin and destination place objects like before but way less code. Hey, if you want to know more about Google Maps API and how you can use it to enhance location-based services in your JavaScript or Vue.js app, check out my course link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.